Mr. Ambassador, you sold a line from Mark Twain. You were the innocent abroad right now. Is the Secretary of State, Mr. Pompeo, is he an innocent abroad? Well, he is in, in the sense that uh, the United States has a tendency to believe that when it comes to the Middle East, we can somehow solve the problems there. We tend to be, in comparison to the cynicism that is on display, particularly uh, in this case, we seem to be quite innocent. I think the president is behaving in that way as well. And uh, he's about to, the secretary, as you said, is in Ankara. He's about to enter the Turkish bazaar where uh, pre uh, President Erdogan has uh, something to sell. That is, he has the goods on the, on the uh, murder mm -hmm. and dismemberment of uh, Jamal Khashoggi. And uh, he's looking uh, for payment, both from the Saudis and the United States. Uh, and he's dribbling out evidence to indicate right. what he has to show. This is so important and with your work in the Near East for the National Security Council as well, it comes down to this interesting dynamic between Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Not Saudi Arabia and Turkey, but the other way. And I don't think that's in the press right now. Describe as you see it how Turkey perceives this emergent event. So President Erdogan sees himself as a kind of heir to the Ottoman legacy in the Middle East when the Turks essentially ruled this vast region uh, and has made it clear that he intends to be the leader of the Muslim world. He can't claim to be the leader of the Arab world since he's not Arab. The Saudis have that title. The king of Saudi Arabia is the custodian of the two holy mosques of Mecca and Medina. So there is an intense competition which is now on display where the, the mm -hmm. Turkish president sees an opportunity to promote his own leadership at the expense of, of the Saudis. Uh, what is so important here, and you have a book coming out next year on Dr. Kissinger as well. Let me give you the easy question. What would Dr. Kissinger would do? What would be the best practices of a foreign policy of another time and place? I think that he would understand the gravity of the situation, that it cannot be simply brushed under the rug and that it's very important, given, given the importance of Saudi Arabia to the United States, particularly because we've made it the pillar, one of the pillars of our anti-Iran strategy in the region, mm -hmm. that we have to find a way to get the Saudi leadership, particularly Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince, to take an active role, not only in terms of saying there will be a thorough uh, transparent investigation, we should aim for that, we're not going to get it, but also in right, terms Martin, of switching the channel, in making uh, focus something positive. Right. Announce getting Martin. out of Yemen. Announce that he's yeah. going to release the women, uh, that he's arrested the women reformers in Saudi Arabia. Do something but to double down on his positive reform agenda to make it clear that there's a reason to be supporting him. Does the U.S., Martin, and does the West that has ties to Saudi Arabia really want to know the truth? Uh, there's certainly, uh, I would say, the vast majority of, of the Senate and Congress, uh, all of the journalists and editorial staff at the Washington Post and therefore the New York Times in competition are determined to get at the truth. And as long as the Turks have not been, as it were, bought off they will be dribbling out more and more information. You can see it on the front pages of the Post and the Times today, uh, identifying uh, some 11 of the 15 Saudis that came into the consulate and then left when Khashoggi was in there uh, uh, as being not just Saudi security officials, but part of the Royal Guard, which is under the direction of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. So whether or not uh, government officials see a national interest, a security interest in, in trying to get past this problem. There are too many stakeholders in the United States uh, fueled by Turkish uh, uh, evidence who will be determined to get to the uh, bottom of this. All right, so should the Trump administration and politicians, and I'm, it's not only the U.S., it's others, also, um, you know, refrain from selling to Saudi Arabia? Should we really be looking at sanctions? What is the next step? Well, I think, uh, first of all, uh, we need to recognize that uh, this is Trump's first real international crisis. 
And he, he, he needs to understand that and basically get off the television and get off tweet. I know that's not a likely uh, scenario, but uh, he is not helping the situation by making it look like uh, he's intent on covering up what happened. Uh, so I think that's, that's number one. Number two, we have to, and I hope that Pompeo, or the Secretary of State, has done this, we have to get on the same uh, uh, script with the Saudis and the Turks and, and in, in effect, put this in a box a, a, that a real investigation is going to take place, but in the meantime, uh, to start to focus on the, on the positive things we have in common with Saudi Arabia and start to get the Crown Prince to make clear that he is going to continue on the positive agenda uh, that he has launched for Saudi Arabia. That's something mm -hmm. that the United States can support, but it's in real jeopardy at the moment right. uh, given the focus on, on this horrible murder.